What's going on everybody? DJ Goham here. Welcome back to the channel. This year's FarmCon is over. At least the production portion is. This year we've learned so much about Farming Simulator 22 during day 1, 2, and 3 on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And in this video today, we're going to talk about the top features and biggest changes overall that you need to know that are going to affect your gameplay and get you excited to play Farming Simulator 22. There are also lots of questions that you guys had as well, and I'm going to go over the top questions today in this video. So let's get started. First, let's talk about features. And we can't talk about features without starting with seasons. At Farming Simulator 22, it is referred to as seasonal cycles. Of course, just like in Farming Simulator 19, we're going to have four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Included with seasons is the new crop calendar, where you can see things that look very similar to what you're used to seeing now, but changed up a little bit. Growth and crop prices will be very similar to the way they work now as well. Not much has changed there. Seasons are locked to three-day seasons now, and everything is labeled with months instead of like spring one, two, and three. Well, it's March, April, and May now. You can plow snow in the winter, and you can now as well. They are working on snow plowing contracts as we speak to try and get those included into the base game. One of the biggest features of Seasons now is you're going to be able to skip days. So you can skip one day, or you could skip more, depending on if there's nothing for you to do or not. So if you don't have anything to do on winter number two, well... Just skip it. I say winter too. Uh, that's December, I think. As you know, some people like to play with seasons and some don't. So they've done what they could do to make it easy for everyone to enjoy it starting off. One thing that you're probably curious about is can you turn off seasons or seasonal cycles? And the answer is yes. If you want to play with seasons turned off, that is easy to do. And if you want to play with seasons turned on, that is easy to do as well. You can just play the way you like. If you play with seasons turned on, seasons snow masks have been added to everything as well as seasons admirers, which are pretty easy to control, especially now for modders versus FS19. Map makers can also define where their map is located in the world. At Farming Simulator 22, will change the season based off of that line of code in the mod map. How cool is that? They're going to be able to set custom crop calendars too to fit the map perfectly. Kind of like built-in seasons geos work now with maps like Chellington Valley. Base game seasons is going to be a game changer, and I can't wait to use it. The next top feature to get hyped about is the build mode. This is going to allow you to create your own custom farm layout. It is going to be way easier than FS19. It allows you to place buildings and other placeables and customize the land all in one screen. There will be new tools, an easier way to use the controls, and hundreds of new placeables base game to make your farm stand out from the rest. The fences are now drawn rather than placed and will follow any terrain, any angle, at any length is truly remarkable. And you can even delete certain sections of the fence that you don't want there, whether that be in the middle or at the very ends. That's gonna make modifying the area nice and easy. Modders will also be able to utilize the placeable system and the build mode to create their own placeables that combine features like a cow pen and a vehicle service area, for example. I don't believe that this was a feature to modders in Farming Simulator 19 because I can't think of anything else like that. I've also conferred with 82 Studio and he seems to be thinking the same as I am. This is a game changer for modders. This build mode is basically a brand new interface. New menus, tabs, and submenus like in buildings. This is going to have sheds, silos, silo extensions, containers, and tools just in the buildings menu. There's a five menus total. You have uh, build mode with pr buildings, productions, animals, decorations, and landscaping. Tons of stuff in there. Decorations are going to have fences, lights, and other in it. And landscaping is going to have sculpting, painting, trees, and plants. And yes, there's going to be actual paintable grass in Farm Sim 22 as well. It's not just the shortest grass, like, you know, a couple inches tall, that you cannot mow. Though, you can paint that too if you wish. This is actually going to allow you to paint full-grown grass. The BGAs are going to be branded now, too, just like a lot of the placeables. These are real things from real-life companies, and we get to use them in the game. It's going to be really neat. There's also going to be new ways to make money, too, with beehives, generators, and solar panels all being part of the base game to help you get over that hump of not having enough money. When you are in the build mode, the player is still going to be on the map, too. So when you see yourself in build mode, you're actually going to be seeing yourself in the third person instead of just disappearing like you do now when you're going into the menus. This is going to be totally different from anything that we've seen before. And the last big feature coming with Farming Simulator 22 are the factories, aka production chains. As you know, these are a way to maximize your profit other than just selling to a sell point at Farming Simulator 22. 
You could take full advantage of these if you want, as long as you own them, or you could bypass them altogether. If you choose to utilize the production chains, you are in for a treat. They're also going to cost you per minute of use, keep that in mind. You could change the output from storing to selling and distributing. This way, if you have a factory, you can hold your goods, you can sell them, or you can have them move it automatically to the next stage. You can even make things like cake, which are going to require flour, sugar, milk, eggs, butter, and strawberries. All of these products can be taken from other production factories or greenhouses which you own. In multiplayer, each farm can have their own production or use the other ones on the map and everyone can chip in. However, someone has to own the final product because that's who sells it. It's a really neat process. So that's it for the top features. Let's talk about some of the other smaller features that are going to impact players' gameplay in a big way because we've got some really cool stuff coming with FarmSim 22. The first is gearboxes. That is right. There will be automatic and manual gear shifting for FarmSim 22 for those of you that want to use a gearbox. If you go for manual shifting, there will be different gears and groups just like the machine would have in real life. Manual transmissions will not be available on all machines, only the ones that it's available for in real life. You won't be able to do a transmission swap or anything like that. This is not Forza. It was mentioned that this is not easy to do, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's going to be pretty simple for a lot of people, I'm sure. They're also working to get this feature to work on shifters like Logitech and Thrustmaster shifters that come with a lot of these steering wheels that you guys are already using for Farm Sim 19 right now. I've even ordered a Logitech shifter to go with my G920 setup to make sure it actually works with FarmSim 22 at launch. The next impactful feature is the harvesting headers. These are actually going to automatically tilt and raise or lower depending on the ground height and angle versus the combine itself. Height is controlled the same on all headers. However, tilt is only available on the ones that they're available on in real life. Older combines, things like that, are not going to have access to this feature. Do keep that in mind. This is all done automatically and cannot be controlled by the player, at least for right now. And my number three impactful feature is the ground itself and how it's going to work when doing different things with it. It's very different from any game we've had before and is going to make doing different things, depending on what you do with it, different. <laughs> that makes sense. If you use a disc harrow, for example, it's only going to till up the top layer of soil resulting in less foliage dispersion, so you're going to visually see that, and the weeds are going to grow back pretty quickly. The upside is you're going to be able to do it much faster and get it over with with a disc arrow than something like a cultivator. Cultivators are the standard that you're probably used to. We've been using them for years, and these are going to rip up the field deeper than a disc, but not as much as a plow. You're going to get medium soil tillage, so you're going to see that visually. Again, it's going to be different from your disc arrow and more foliage dispersion. You're also going to have to go a little bit slower than disking. Weeds are going to grow back at a slower rate than disking, but not as slow as a plow. However, with plowing, you get maximum field tillage with the foliage being completely plowed under. Again, you're going to see that visually and it will take weeds the longest time to grow back. You're also going to have to go slower, but it is worth it. One really neat thing that's going to come with this is you can apply double slurry. So if you have extra slurry when doing a field and want to get rid of it in a useful way other than just selling it, just enable double slurry and you can add not one, but two applications of fertilizer at once while going alone. You're going to have to go at half speed, but that is the way it is. The only thing is Giants did not announce if this feature is going to be available with other fertilizers, like solid fertilizer, for example. That's all I do in the game. Or maybe liquid fertilizer, even manure. We're going to have to wait and see with those. So that's the top three features and the three smaller but impactful features coming with Farming Simulator 22 that we know about after FarmCon. However, lots of you have still had some questions about other things going on in FS22. So I want to make sure we take the time to answer some of those questions. These are the biggest and most asked questions about Farming Simulator 22 post FarmCon. Probably the biggest for me is, will there be a Seasons Pass? Yes, there will be a season Pass, and Giants will be announcing it soon, but they're still working on it. Some things for the game just take a little bit more time than others, and this is one of those things. But don't worry, it is happening. The Season Pass will also not only be available on consoles, however, it's going to be on PC as well at the launch of the game. How cool is that? This is going to be announced soon, and I will let you know once it is done, because I need to get this too. Can you pre-order the Collector's Edition of FS22 yet in the United States? Yes, it is available right now on Best Buy's website, which I will leave a link to in the description below. This comes with a PC disc version of the game, but if you are using digital codes or you don't have a CD drive, you can do this as well because it's going to include a digital code inside for you to use. Big shout out to one of my Discord members, Own Insanity, for letting me know about this a few days ago. 
you are a legend. However, for those of you on console, there is no PlayStation or Xbox version of the Collector's Edition, and there will not be one. The next question is, will there be more character customization? Yes, FS22 will be improved and is much better than FarmSim 19 when it comes to character customization. There is way more versatility and customization for ladies and gentlemen as well, and there will be more options, though they didn't really go in much detail about this. Which fruit types will be going into the greenhouses? We heard about those. Well, this is going to be strawberries, tomatoes, and salad, aka lettuce. They're all done differently than you're used to, however. They're going to be produced in pallets, and they're going to work with the production chains, or you could just sell them and get rid of them. Will there be GPS? No. No, 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 no. They're trying, but the answer is unfortunately no. Can we do more than one contract at a time? Here's some good news. They're still working on the contract system. However, the pending answer is actually yes. They want you to be able to do more than one contract at a time. And I think that's great. Can consoles turn on their hazard lights? Well, there is no final answer to this. However, right now, the answer is unfortunately no. The game does not run smoothly when they're doing, running this on console. So they're trying to sort that out. But if this does not improve, the answer will be no. What about slot counts? Are console players going to have to worry about slots this time around? Yes, the limit is there so that you don't crash your game. You've seen me crash my game quite a few times on PC, and it's never good. The slot limit is there from keeping you from doing that on console because PlayStation Xbox will be very displeased to hear that your game is crashing. Is there anything that the new generation consoles are going to get that the old ones want? Maybe you're on a Series X and you want to know, is that going to be different from your Xbox One? Well, no. All platforms are going to have the same game, no matter if it's PS4 versus PS5 or Xbox One versus Series X. They are all the same game. However, the thing that will change is the graphics and how the game looks and how it performs. The game is going to look way better on newer hardware and it's probably going to perform a little better on the newer hardware as well. It will, however, be satisfactory on the others as well. Same with PCs. The better the PC, the better the game is going to look and perform. Will multiplayer still need syncing when playing with others? Yes, you have to synchronize your game with others in the session. Otherwise, everything's going to be way off. This is just the way to do it. However, it will be much quicker and much better with this new game. Will all tractors have license plates and can you change them? Most, but not all are going to have them. They are trying to get them on as many as possible though. And yes, you will be able to customize your license plate. You can make it whatever you want and you can change the design a little bit too. And even the map is going to designate what license plate is on there. You can change it from map to map. Will NPC traffic be faster? No, not really. It's going to be normal for different areas. If it's a highway, they're going to be faster. If it's back roads, they're going to be slower. Traffic's not going to be changed much from what we have right now. And no, you cannot push them off the road. And lastly, the most asked question of FarmCon 21, will there be cross-platform play in the game? Well, they want to make it be like that. They want cross-platform play. But right now, there is no definitive yes or no answer. They're trying to make it happen, and they're working to answer that right now. They are talking to companies like Sony and Microsoft to make sure that it can happen. But could it happen? I'm not sure. The answer right now is, I don't know. They're trying. And that is it. That is all the top stories and the most impactful features that we've learned about at FarmCon 21 this year. I will be making another video very soon showing off all of the tractors and equipment that we've got so far for FarmSim 22. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Farming Simulator 22 will be released on Monday, November 22nd, 2021 on PC, Mac, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, plus Google Stadia. If you're on PC and would like to pre-order the game right now, check out the link below and make sure you use code DJGOHAM. That link goes to help support the channel at no additional cost to you, and 100% of the proceeds from the FS22 pre-orders will be going back to giveaways, so that those that cannot get the game will still have a chance to get one of the giveaways. I want to thank everyone who has used that code so far to get the new game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys rock. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it, get subscribed to the channel if you're new, and join the GoHam Fam channel members. Also, make sure your notification bells are on as well so that you never miss any future Farming Simulator 22 content and daily Farming Simulator videos here on the channel. All be said, hope you have a great day. We'll see you later.